John at Longevity Learning Lab, and today we're doing a setup on the Longevity Innovator 255i. And this uh, multi process machine is a four in one machine with IGBT technology, auto voltage sensing, 110, 220. It comes with everything you see here on the table. That's your stick stinger for stick welding. Of course, your ground. Got your TIG torch with a foot control, and it also has hand control on the TIG torch, and your plasma arc stinger. Also comes with the adapter power cord for 110. We're going to do the hookup connections for the Innovator 255i for TIG welding, and we're going to start by powering up the machine, which is on the back of the machine. Powered up. We'll start with the ground connection. Real easy. Next, our TIG torch itself. connection the gas connection all your connections are solid in place and now you're set up and ready to go Okay, now that we've made all our connections on the machine, the Innovator 255i, we're gonna do the argon hookup with the gas line for our regulator. And here's our argon tank. We're gonna put the regulator in. Thread it in. Now you just want to snug this up. You don't want to torque on it too much. That's good right there. Then make the gas line connection. And the same thing with this. You snug it up good. You don't have to torque on it much. That's it. Then you turn, the, crack the bottle open. This gauge here is your working pressure, the gas that's gonna be flowing out of your TIG torch. The second gauge over here is your tank pressure. And it says we got, oh, just over 2,000 pounds the tank pressure in there. And over here, we're going to run between 20 and 25 on the argon pressure coming out of the torch, which is good. welding. It's real simple. Here is your uh, amps temperature setting. And I usually set it around 110 for Average uh, stuff for, and over here is this is AC. We're not going to be that's not used right now because we're on DC straight. This, so you, you hit this button up here for your and make sure the TIG torch lights up. There it is, TIG torch. Here it shows 2T, which is TIG. Down here is lift, scratch, start. Now, some people prefer scratch, start. Some like high frequency, which is the torch just has to be close to the material and it'll start up the arc by itself. But when you're on lift, you gotta actually scratch this tungsten 
the tungsten against the material and then the arc starts up and that's how that works and pulse is going to be off and here's your polarity and we're going to be on DC okay, now that we've made our settings on the front panel control panel for the Innovator 255i we're going to make uh, an actual TIG weld on some uh, mild steel sheet metal and this is typical of your weld position for a right-handed person. TIG torch in your right hand and get set up and my filler rods in my left hand and I'm going to strike an arc and I'm going to progress from right to left dipping the rod in the puddle making a nice little 1 8 bead on the sheet metal okay here we go for our TIG weld after you strike the arc up you're heating the material up the metal and you'll see the puddle form and as soon as it forms you dip the rod in and then you start moving in a timed progression even dipping into the puddle and what that does is it gives you that stack of dimes ripple effect on the bead and you keep going in an even motion so it's kind of critical um, for the material to be clean you can't have any residue on it of any kind no oil no scale no crap I always wire brush it first And what we have is a nice, smooth, continuous weld that looks like a, a small stack of dimes laid over with the ripples even. Now, some people like to dip and just move forward dipping. Every time you dip in the puddle, you're cooling the puddle and pushing the bead forward. And some people like to kind of walk the cup side to side up and down and keep the rod in there continuous either way you're going to get the nice results with this to innovator 255i See how I keep the TIG torch there after I break the arc? That's to give it the post gas flow over the end of the weld so you don't get a fish eye or a nasty crater. It makes a difference on uh, quality welds where they're going to be going to be inspected. Okay, now we're going to set up for stick welding. That's single manual arc welding. And you're going to check your settings on your machine. Just make sure you're on stick welding mode. It's flashing in the middle on the green. That's where it's supposed to be. Over here is your polarity setting. And you want to be on DC reverse. Positive. Now we're going to hook up our ground clamp. Ground clamp. Going into negative terminal. Tighten it. Stinger going into the positive terminal and tighten it up electrode holder stinger is ready for our electrode and you're good to go when you stick weld and you first strike the arc 
you want to make sure it's just a smooth striking motion without sticking the rod because if you stick the rod it heats it up and it cracks the flux and it kind of falls off so you want to avoid that just a smooth little light striking motion once the arc strikes strikes and starts up then you choke up on it shorten the arc and and keep it real close to the metal and and keep the puddle even size and width all the way down the metal as you deposit the weld. Now we're going to go through the physical connection hookup of the plasma arc cutting torch. The torch, we're going to grab the connecting end and hook it up right here on the negative side which is DC straight. Our control connector. Thread it on good. On there. This red wire connection. And then the airline connection. And then our ground connection. Going here on the positive terminal. Okay, now we're gonna go through the settings on the control panel for the plasma arc cutter. And over here, there's a three position setting and we wanna set it for plasma, which is the bottom one with the little red light, and that's where it's at now. And over here on the polarity, we want to make sure the polarity switch is on DC straight, which it'll automatically go to. Over here is our temperature setting for amps, and we're going to turn it up. I'm one of those guys that believes in cranking it up. We're going to be Cutting quarter inch material, I'm going to set it right around 30, close to 35. And that would be it for the plasma arc cutter. Okay, now we're going to do the actual cutting with the plasma arc torch. You're going to get in position, make sure your piece is in a spot where you can get at it and make a good cut. And you're going to get up relatively close. And then you're going to push the button on the plasma arc torch and it's going to come on and then you're going to progress and make your cut. Okay, now we're going to make our cut. When you're plasma cutting, you have to make sure that you got all the necessary settings on the machine. And that means you want to set the heat, the amperage, according to the thickness of the material. Okay, there you have it. That was all the processes with the Longevity Innovator 255i. Went through all three processes, the TIG, the stick, and the plasma arc cutting. It has PFC technology, auto voltage capability with the 110, 220 uh, power. And it comes with everything you see here on the table. You got your TIG torch, your plasma arc cutter torch, stinger, ground clamp, and your power adapter cord. So to recap, it's a versatile machine with all the processes and it's a fine runner. Thank you for watching.